Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee roaster vlog. Um, so I said I wasn't going to record it, but I ended up <laughs> uh, recording it because I just want to make sure. So um, I'm about to go do the seasoning roast. I'm preheating the machine. I'll try to get this guy up to um, the right temperature and then go from there. I won't be talking any rest of the way now because I won't be focusing. Okay, see you later. My gauge didn't even move. Oh, because it's maxed out. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me come back down. Ooh, okay. It's such a minuscule, uh, and yeah, adjustment. I'm on a uh, propane. Oh, Nick, for the thermometer that's near the hopper, is that my environmental temperature? Hey, welcome back. This is Meg, and this is another Black City Coffee vlog updating our roaster series. So getting back to um, our seasoning roast here. I said I wasn't going to record it, but hey, um, it turned out that I didn't have a second person to be with me today, and I was really feeling crunch time to get roasting so I didn't want to wait for Kevin to to be here and I thought well I'm just going to record it I've got Nick on Skype uh, from Mill City and I feel fairly confident um, being on the phone with him like a couple days ago uh, with the machine that I could do it by myself so I wasn't freaking out or anything I was fairly confident about being able to be uh, talked through most of these processes. However, I was surprised on a couple of things and that's what I want to cover in this seasoning roast. While you see me kind of uh, finagling about and going through this machine for the first time and learning so many different things. So first things first is uh, we're doing a little bit of a uh, lighter test and the reason why we do the lighter test is um, we want to see with this machine in particular where its low, medium, and high uh, air exhaust settings are at, since every machine is slightly different from the other. They're all basically handmade and everything. So here I am. Um, I'm looking at the flame. I've taken out the trier and seeing, and I'm holding it about an inch away from the trier, and I'm seeing what the flame is doing. So I want it to, um, as I'm being told, have a slight curve in towards the trier porthole um, and I'm at a low setting probably about uh, 35 to 40. And then so we go through the whole process. I learn what my medium is and what my high is and uh, we make adjustments from there. Another thing that uh, we kind of glossed over in the beginning um, was that I had bought a regulator for my propane tank and the regulator uh, had a pressure of about 20 PSI and I just got this off of Amazon um, That's incorrect. It's way too much pressure to be blowing fuel through the lines into the roaster you could actually um, Blow out the ignition or something like that. I forgot what he said, but it, it was not good. It's too much pressure That's basically the thing. So what he told me is that I needed to get a regulator that was one half PSI to really dampen the amount of pressure coming through the line from the tank into the roaster. So the movements that I'll be making with that blue gas knob are very, very minuscule. It's like, it's a, it's, it's a touch and a feel and you can only do it by really touching it. It's very much like if you're a gamer, it's very, you know, analog. Uh, you, you know, on the joystick, when you press it just a tiny, tiny bit, you know, the player will move. So that's that's the kind of vibe that um, I was kind of operating on. I had to move so minuscule with my movements on the burner. Um, and you see the pressure gauge that's not shown here in this clip, but it's right above the blue knob and you could see uh, where I could be at. So that was uh, one of the biggest changes that I needed to make thus on the very next day. I did order a one half PSI regulator for 
uh, the gas. So maybe I'll have a little bit more easier time, you know, moving around and, and manipulating the, how much how much uh, gas is coming through the line. Um, so that was kind of like number one. And then of course he took a look at my um, venting setup. He's like, okay, you know, that looks fine uh, for now. Um, but I imagine that it's going to be difficult for you to sort of clean that and kind of maintain that for a long period of time. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm going to put money away and I'm going to save up for the venting kit because I can see why you guys put together this venting kit and all that stuff after I gone through the ringer. And I could probably say, hey, if you're already spending seven grand for this machine, go ahead and spend the extra grand for the venting kit. Um, just to make your life a little bit easier. With me, I will have to still be uh, purchasing some extra parts just because my exhaust is sort of like an L shape, right? Right out the garage, which I'll, I should lay over some B-roll footage for you right here so you could see what the smoke looked like at its worst. And uh, for me being in a residential area, it wasn't that bad, you know? It wasn't that bad. So um, what we were doing is um, really working off the PID, which is that, uh, you see that 398.2 um, on the on the red uh, numbers there on the panel. We were working off that and Nick told me that it, that is not accurate. So um, it was imperative for me to get Artisan working. It was not working at the moment, so I, I tried to set it up there. I'll, um, I'll give you a rundown of uh, Artisan and how I connect that once I get that all situated and figured out. I I do have it connected and situated as this moment as I'm currently recording this, but I do feel that there are some discrepancies that I need to adjust for. Okay, so I'm just here on the phone with Nick. It's probably going to be about a 30 minute call. We're going to go through one full roast of 2.2 uh, .2 pounds basically for this machine, full uh, kilogram for this first roast together. And um, another thing too is that, you know, um, I'll break down my whole roasting process. I feel like that's a much later, when I nail it, when I really get down my systems. But um, one of the things that was alarming to me the very first time was the alarm that happens at 350 degrees. So there is a little red um, alarm thing not shown here. It's on the side of the whole control panel. Um, that you can actually dampen that. And so I just put a piece of dark duct tape over it, dampen that that alarm right up, and that wasn't too bad. So I'm just preparing my roaster a little bit more, pulling it further out to the garage uh, so that my I have some clearance for the smoke and stuff because it's about to get super smoky. You guys are going to see probably in a little bit. So there you go. I've got my... Uh, seasoning greens there. They're gonna go right into the trash after they are seasoned, um, after they release all of their oils into the drum. Um, and we're just gonna hit it. So we're gonna go through like a natural roasting sort of um, timeline. Um, but we did make one little mistake here, which is not turning off the, uh, the burner um, after charging. So and that's just because it, it doesn't really even matter right now. All, my focus right now was just to go through the motions, see what this button does, see what this is like, like what does this sound like? What does this look like? You know, um, and just allowing myself to make a mistake with the guidance of Nick uh, to reel me back in when I did make mistakes. Okay, so see on the PID we're at 404. We're actually our aim during this call was to get to 415. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, I've never charged at 415 before, but whatever. We were just like, let's go for it, like right now. So here I am, I'm loading the hopper and we're approaching 415. I've got my hand on the red knob to open the hopper. And right now he's asking me, hey, are there any beans that are falling through or anything like that? Um, and then he was also telling me to increase the drum speed from 50 is what they tell you to 80. So I increased to 80 on the drum. And then I'm opening. And they're in there and I can hear them and see how the temperature on the PID drops because you've got beans in the drum, so cool. And then he's asking me, did any green beans fall through into the roasting tray? I said, no. So that's a good sign. And you know that part uh, 
uh, that was just hanging out. Like <laughs> nobody knows where that came from. It was just in there. So I just kept it and uh, machine works fine. Okay, so fast forward a little bit more and um, I'm looking through the porthole. I'm waiting for yellowing. And what I didn't do during this, which in a normal roast, you would actually, you know, turn off all the gas, um, you know, and maybe wait for a minute and then turn the gas back on, right? After a minute passes. But we didn't do that this time and it didn't really matter, right? Because it's just seasoning. We're trying to just get those oils to release and coat the drum. So as we're rising in temperature back up again, um, we're waiting for yellow. I'm just chit-chatting with Nick at this time and I'm waiting to call yellow. And of which case, after you hit yellowing, um, you can increase your fan, you can lower your um, heat a little bit like I'm doing now. If I'm climbing too fast or whatever, we're a minute 45 into the roast. We're about, I remember when we did this, we were a minute off. So imagine we're two minutes 52 right now, right? So um, there's a lot of things that I have to work Okay, I'm calling yellow probably at this moment. And I'm letting him know that it looks yellow. And I'm smelling and I'm doing all that kind of bit. You know, these seasoning roast, it was, it you didn't get those bready smells because it was dead stock. So there you go, I increased the fan to about a medium. My heat is probably at like one KPA. And we're just going through the roast. Or I'm hearing some random, not first crack, but I was hearing probably some outliers. We had a lot of heat in the machine, right? Because I'm just, I'm just learning how this thing just operates and how much heat actually does come through. It's like super powerful, like they said. And it was so awesome and surreal, guys, like that I was doing this and I was on the phone with Nick and I was pulling the trier and I was seeing and smelling and things like that. I was just going through the motions of like what a real roaster is in my mind, like the dream that I had months, months ago um, about actually doing this and actually doing it, you know? It was so surreal, it was so cool. It was, it was just very present and very grateful and very happy, you know? I was super happy in that moment. I was just so locked in. And it was, it was very cool to be very present um, and to just be enjoying the process of learning. It was, it was so cool. And, you know, Nick could probably hear my excitement. Here I go, just again, up the fan. We're getting to that point. We're decreasing the heat. Um, I'm seeing probably the beans turn to a nice brown. Um, we're at four. Oh, yes. Okay, so I remember... At four, we hit our first crack. And um, of course, you know, the beans are very, very dry. So that's kind of expected, but also that we didn't turn off our heat. Remember when we tried, I mean, when we charged. So a lot of heat up front, um, but it's cool. It's all good. I remember we're getting first crack right here. So I'm letting it roll. And I'm on the phone with him and we're kind of just like chit chatting and stuff. It, it was so cool to speak with somebody who was so calm and patient. Um, also just knew everything, you know, front and back of this machine. Um, I'm covering that little, um, I didn't damper the alarm yet. So that's what I was doing. I was covering the alarm because you'll hit it at 350. Um, and it's a safety feature. It's just to remind you not to leave the roaster. Um, when it's approaching this temperature that you should be here, you should be paying attention. Um, but I never left <laughs> in the four batches that I did this whole season roast. You're supposed to do five, right? But it was pretty late in the afternoon and I was getting hit with so many flies. I was like, I got to cut out. And um, um, what was I going to say? Shoot. Anyway, yeah. So, um, sorry, there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I'm trying to remember back to that day too, and it's a little difficult to remember everything, but also like it's all there, um, but to tell it to you guys, like how it was, a lot of stuff was just going down. And I'm like, ooh, okay, cool. Like I see it, they're nice and smoky. Um, awesome. I've got my fan up to a low high setting. We're, <clears throat> We're six minutes into the roast. We're at, so the PID says 377. 
Alrighty, I've got my cooling fan going um, and that is helping me push some of that smoke um, because it is backing up um, back into the garage where I'm at, which it, it was getting quite smoky and I smelt so much like smoke after the end of the season rose because I didn't really know. Well, you're, you're just going to produce a crap ton of smoke when you're doing the seasoning roast, so just expect it. You're going to smell like a barbecue when you're done, like a, like a coffee barbecue. Okay, so we're on the phone still. See that smoke coming through? So yeah, it's coming back into the garage, and I was like, uh-oh, is it going to be like this the whole time? Fortunately, no, because I did a roast today where I was like not seasoning. I was just roasting real beans. Um, and no problem, no problem with the smoke, guys. So, so after you get through the seasoning roast, which is five batches of whatever that full capacity is of your of your drum, like the smoke is so tolerable. You know, it's it's to me it's very minuscule. Being in a residential area, I feel nothing to really worry about, especially with this type of machine. It's very small, and uh, I wouldn't imagine going any bigger than this in a home like ours. All right, so. For some reason, he told me to decrease my fan and just kind of let this ride out. I think it's because we just want to, you know, cook these guys to their um, to their darkest <laughs> darkest levels. And um, you know how if you will roast up until like a French roast or something like that, very shiny, right? Very oily. All the all the oils from the coffee is released onto the surface of the bean. What you want. As Nick told me, a good, the perfect seasoning roast is that when these beans become matte, so no longer shiny, all of the oils from the coffee have been coated back onto the drum itself. That's what you want. So you want to do that five times. And so for 20 minutes, we're going to ride this roast out for 20 minutes and just let all of that, um, those oils get onto that drum. And uh, another thing too, why it's so smoky, it's like when you're cooking inside, right? You got a pan, you got a really hot pan. If you put uh, oil on there that burns, that has a, like a high smoking point, um, like olive oil or something like that, and you put it on a very hot pan, it starts to smoke, right? Because it starts, there's like, I guess there's a lot of liquid in there. Or when you have like wet, um, what foliage that you burn and a lot of smoke can be produced because there's a lot of moisture in it, right? The same thing, that's, that's why you get a lot of smoke is because you you are burning all of those oils onto the drum. It's kind of like when you're seasoning a cast iron skillet. Same, same kind of principles, I believe. As I understand it, you know? I could be wrong, sorry. So right there, Nick just boned out on me. No, <laughs> so he was like, all right, it sounds like you got this all figured out. You're gonna do this four more times. You're gonna run this roast for 20 minutes total. See all this smoke coming back into the garage. So I was like, oh snap, it's getting like kind of smoky. My eyes were getting kind of uh, watery at this point. Um, and I was like, I gotta do four more of these. Okay, so um, I got a big old fan. I started to position it so I could try to help me push some of this smoke outside um, and stuff like that. But I think at this moment, I didn't even press the cooling fan. So <laughs> once I figured that out, um, again, you know, there's just things that you find out on your own. Like Nick didn't really tell me about that. Um, and so once you press the cooling fan, once you start to get some smoke, it'll push it out and you won't have all of this smoke back up. Uh, again, it's because I'm, I'm roasting it to a point of, crazy blackness uh but yeah so uh yeah so we're gonna go through this until right there you see for 10 minutes we only had 10 minutes so i got 10 more minutes to go but i won't bore you with that but i'm glad you guys got to see uh, my first roast basically it's my first seasoning roast and then i'm gonna do this four more times and then once i nail everything down um, and i feel confident and really comfortable in what my profiles are doing and all that kind of stuff. I'll maybe come back on here and do another, um, it was like sucking the smoke in. I was like, man, that's not good. This is, this is not working. <laughs> I do not understand how smoke works. Uh, but yeah, when I figure it all out, I'll be sure to come back and make another tutorial vid. Um, I think there's so many things that I still didn't know of um, that I, I feel like I could, I could share with you guys who are upgrading to this level or, or even thinking about it. Um, there you can see what the smoke looks like. <laughs>
I'm on a tripod and I couldn't get it to like focus up. So sorry, a little crookedness going on here. I was like, can I put it this way, can I put it this way? So that was as worse as it got, all right? That's as bad as it got. Uh, not terribly terrible, but eh, noticeable, right? But anyway, yeah, good things. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.